Well, we can cross now to speak uh, with the, the reporters who made that report. Uh, Shona Badacharya is standing by. Uh, Shona, firstly, can you tell us, how did you meet this uh, guy and find out you know, that he was part of this Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army? Well, uh, if we met up with the source at all, it's uh, thanks to Maisa Awad, our uh, Arabic uh, language journalist here at France 24, who carried out a very thorough uh, investigation into this shadowy group. Uh, we uh, met uh, our source, who, by the way, the, his name in the report is not his real name. We took great lengths to protect his identity. Uh, he met with us in his home, where he spoke to us uh, relatively freely, unless he thought, of course, that there were prying ears uh, around that uh, he didn't want uh, to hear or didn't want them to know that he was speaking with us. Uh, now, you must remember that this is the first time uh, that a member of the uh, Arakan Rohingya Salvation Army is speaking uh, to a television crew uh, anywhere around the world. And uh, it is dangerous for him. It was dangerous. Uh, it's still dangerous for us. And that's why, unfortunately, I cannot disclose too much information at this time. Uh, tell me, Shona, do you have any idea, even vaguely, of how many members of this group are possibly in Bangladesh? And what kind of support do they have among the Rohingya refugees there? Well, according to our sources, you saw in that report, some 300 uh, Rohingya um, people are being trained every day in uh, spread out in camps uh, here in the region. Uh, those camps, of course, are under top secret. Uh, we were not, again, able to go to one of those camps. Uh, those trainings, though, last about 20 days overall. They include several phases, um, and uh, they are... Um, uh, they are uh, uh, they are said to be about 1,000 people, at least as our source told us, that 1,000 people have been trained so far uh, since the events in August. And uh, according to our source, once again, those people were all uh, sent back over the border to Burma um, now uh, to continue fighting against, of course, the Burmese uh, authorities and, and army there. Uh, we are also hearing reports about 150 foreign fighters. Again, uh, this is all uh, hearsay. Uh, at this point, um, a, a Given the, the talking about the, the support among the population, uh, it's pretty split. You have some people who support uh, the the fight, the struggle for the freedom uh, and the, the 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 rights, of course, of the Rohingya people in uh, in Burma. A lot of other people, however, are blaming ARSA. They're blaming them for uh, for this uh, Burmese attack uh, against them in the first place. They say that if ARSA had not attacked uh, Burmese checkpoints uh, on August 25th, that the army there would not have retaliated against the Burmese population, sending them fleeing. As you know, almost 450,000 uh, Rohingya members are now uh, have now fled uh, to neighboring Bangladesh. So it's a very uh, mixed, uh, mixed reviews here among the population of Rohingya refugees, whether to support uh, ARSA or not. Uh, and finally, Shona, we did hear from one Bangladeshi official in your report, but can you give us a more global idea of uh, the attitude of Bangladeshi authorities uh, towards this group? Uh, that's right. Now, the uh, just a few days ago, the Cox's Bazaar superintendent of police, Cox's Bazaar is the is the biggest town uh, closest to Kutupalong, which is uh, the sprawling refugee camp, and that's likely to be one of the biggest in the world uh, very soon. Um, now, the superintendent of police said that no member of ARSA is in Bangladesh. Uh, he said that members uh, of law enforcement agencies, including police, border patrol, uh, intelligence services, are all on the lookout. They're very strictly following the border to make sure that no members of ARSA come into the country. Of course, we know that that is not true. We also know that authorities uh, are arresting people that they believe to be part of ARSA. Uh, and uh, the... Um the, the support of, of, of ARSA members. Um, however, it's also rem important to remember the means of the, uh, the ARSA uh, members uh, as we speak. They don't actually have uh, really weapons per se. Uh, they have, uh, they, as we saw in the report, they fight uh, with sticks, they fight with swords, uh, they also have, uh, they have guns, but they reportedly don't have ammunition, uh, guns that they stole from, uh, from, from the army uh, in, in Burma during that August 25th attack. And so their means are quite limited. Uh, and so it's really, at this point, uh, will the Bangladeshi authorities be able uh, to squash uh, or, or the, the, the Rohingya army 
army, uh, as they like to call themselves, before it really becomes uh, something powerful enough to really uh, hurt the, popu the population both in Burma and in Bangladesh. Okay, Shona, very interesting to hear all of that. Thanks indeed for joining us. Shona Bhattacharya there, who is with Cyril Payan and Maisa Wad reporting for us from Bangladesh.